Thanks, Jeanette. Amazing throwback to me. Anyway, on today's spotlight, like I said earlier, we've got the incredible, super talented genius, Ben Edlin, joining us. It's an honor to have you on this show. We're pals, but I also really respect everything you've done. <laughs> Let's go into some of the stuff before we just sure. go rock and talk about the brand new Tick Pilot that you've got on Amazon, mm -hmm. premiering August 19th. Let's go back a little bit past the Tick, the animated series, uh -huh. and talk about some of the other incredible shows you've worked on. You worked with Joss Whedon on yeah. not only Firefly, but also um, Angel. Yeah, that's true. So what did you um, what did you do on Angel as far as like uh, what season did you rock on? I went from the last well the first and last season of Firefly and then <clears throat> switched over to uh, um, uh, Angel for its fifth season. Actually, I I kind of jumped on just as they were ending their fourth, but really started with the fifth. One of my favorite seasons of Angel. That's fantastic. It's the when fourth it went and fifth. Crazy. Yeah. It went crazy. <laughs> Wolf Graham and Hart. What was that? They took over. Yeah, it yeah. was a lot of fun. Yeah. Glad you were a part of that. An extremely unusual premise and a really wonderful like toy box to be playing with. Definitely. You know? um, and I got my first chance to direct. Uh, on that one, and I mean, that was really good, but I was mainly just a writer producer, so I did I wrote a number of episodes, co wrote one with David Fury, that was really cool. But then uh, with uh, Whedon, that was kind of the sort of camp where you did a lot of real hands on producing, and so that was really good for me awesome. educationally. And that brought you into the supernatural fold, yeah. After a couple of different stops, um, I actually worked with Marty Noxon on a short lived show called Point Pleasant, I uh, kind of did some you know, pilot peddling of my own. I liked Point Pleasant. I actually saw that. Oh, yeah. I yeah. took it. It was out on DVD, and I was like, I'm going to yeah. get this. The hell is this? Yeah. This. Um, Very yeah. fun. No, no. I mean, and I, you know, it had, I thought Grant's show was really wonderful on that show, and it had really its own wonderful little thing. We shot uh, San Diego for New Jersey. That's a challenge, Hi. given uh, the uh, number of uh, palm trees. But then uh, ended up at uh, Supernatural, which was a seven year run on. I had no suspicion that it was going to be what it became. Sure. Which a lot of people did. It kept like transforming. Global kind of, especially with the advent of things like Netflix, this, it has just keeps sort of backfilling this new audience of angst ridden, emotional <laughs> teens that want to see, to see that catharsis played out and, uh, or just grown uh, folks who um, really fall for the mythology or the brothers. It's just something that's been like, Nonstop. Yeah, it's still got an incredible following. I think it's rocking into its twelfth season. Yeah, like that. So yeah, it's um, just gonna keep going. So let's go to the tick. So you created sure. this character when you were in high school, mm -hmm. and kind of like uh, the comic book store that you were you're hanging out at. They were like, "Yo, let's make some things happen." All of a sudden, you sold the toy rights, and then Sunbow came involved. And you're then you're ba basically making an animated series. You're in your, your <laughs> early twenties. You're yeah. you're making this this creation of your own. You did this incredibly super creative television show. Hmm. Very fun, a lot of crazy characters in it. Yeah. Uh, years <laughs> later, then you got a chance to do an actual season of live action Tick series starring Patrick Warburton as yeah. the Tick. You yeah. did a season of that. And now, coming full circle, you're back with your creation, the Tick, and you're over at Amazon, and you're doing yeah. a brand new Tick series. Let's talk about that. How did that come about? Uh, just the, the new one. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, uh, it started as a kind of a ripple between some of the forces that came together to make the previous live action. Um, I was not one of that uh, initial ripple. I mean, like, there were a, a number of voices, but um, Barry Josephson, who was w uh, one of the key producers on the previous um, live action, right. and Patrick Warburton himself, and at Sony, um, the, among the people... Uh, uh, Glenn Edelman and Chris Parnell. Uh, Chris Parnell was a big like geek himself, right just on. like uh, panels down in San Diego. And uh, anyway, they all sort of um, a variety of voices came together. That created some momentum to see this thing, and it started to really be kind of understood that inside the company at Sony, there was just this history of real enthusiasm for this project that had sort of been viewed as something that had been given uh, a shot, but not really reached you know, the, the, the kind of foothold that it could conceivably find. Um, and I got involved. I mean, this is very similar to the previous version in that it came to me, they were sort of interested in sort of investigating this. It took me a long time again to come around to the idea of doing this live action because I felt it still was an unsolved equation. How do you make superhero comedy 
a lasting long form entertainment? How do you not lose all of the air in your bag so that you're just watching, which I've been starting to term the syndrome of the previous live action, which had a tremendous amount of quality and a lot of really great people in Nestor Carbonell and David Burke and Liz Vassy among, you know, and we had like, you know, Ron Perlman and um, uh, a gr a just a great number of, um, you know, support cast. I mean, it was really bristling with potential, but at its core, it could not achieve more than something like a, a police squad. Right. You know, because it was just so jokey. So in order for this to work, there was this great momentum and a feeling of a desire to do this from Sony, but then the conception of how to make it work, I had to figure that out. And that was, that felt like trying to do some weird judo throw of this tremendous, massy amount of content and take it from uh, complete nonsense into some area. I didn't even know what that would be. And I'd say that part of me that doesn't know how to assess the pilot is the one that's a little bit shocked because it's a new tone. It is actually, I think, new. I cannot wait to see this. You've got, uh, let's let's go to some of the images that we have from the brand new Tick. So the starring role <laughs> of the Tick is uh, Peter Serafinowicz. Yeah, and Peter Serafinowicz. Incredibly who, um, super talented guy. Yes. A lot of uh, Americans might know him from Spaced. Yeah. I know him from uh, the other series. Uh, uh, well, he did um, look around you. Look I mean, around like you. his highest profile work in America tends to be like some of his least, you know, personal. I mean, that is, you know, him maybe from Guardians of the Galaxy. Sure. Uh, he plays a, um, a role in that as a sort of a, um, I forget Nova Corps, like what yeah. a bunch of a holes. He's yeah. that guy. He's that yeah. guy, precisely. And um, he's, you know, been the voice of Darth Maul, and he's got an extraordinary voice. There we've got Jackie Earl Haley. Yeah. What character does he play? He plays the Terror, who is a kind of a long term uh, character in the Tick Mythos who started in the comic book and who has been, had an expression in every one of the subsequent kind of iterations, I feel like this is our strongest capturing of, you know, what he has been, but also something brand new. And Jackie's amazing. He's, his performance is really great in it. So no, I can't wait to see this. I, I, cool. I, I'm glad that you've like taken a new, a new spin mm. on the Tick series. Now, anybody who's out there, if you, even if you don't have Amazon Prime, you can go to the Amazon channel and watch the pilot and vote on it. So yes, starting on the August 19th. August 19th is when you can actually check out this brand new Tick pilot, vote on it, and let's make this turn into a brand new Tick series. Yes. It's all up to you, really. I mean, it's kind of the power to the people kind of yeah. thing. That's what Amazon Studios is all about. Uh, what else can you add to this brand new tick that that audiences can look forward to? Uh, geez, um, I mean, hmm. it's it should have. I don't know. It's going to be quite absurd. I mean, I we I actually brought a little uh, clip from it. That's I right. don't know if we want to yeah, take a know, look I at that. I think that's a great. Let's throw to um, the clip. I mean, you know, uh, part of it I want to kind of to build up the clip is sure. just you know, and this is really seriously true that it's. It became important to kind of um, really, we want to grap grapple with like a real epic sweep. So we got Wally Pfister, the director oh, um, yeah, Chris of Transcendence, DP, yeah. and Flaked, who was for a long time from Memento through the Batman t trilogy. We've got Wally Pfister. Yeah. Uh, he was his uh, um, d uh, director of photography. So we want we want to use all the tools of the, the medium of superhero storytelling of today to really kind of turn it on its, uh, you know, uh, axis and be able to both portray that epicness but have, uh, you know, a way of capturing comedy with it too. Definitely. That was the big challenge. So that's just, you know, to feel that as you're like taking a look at this first thing, which is the broadcast premiere basically. Yeah, I think um, you've only shown this one other time before, like earlier, like a couple yeah, weeks we, ago. Yeah, at, at right. Comic-Con we kind of snuck it in there, but it's not really something that's been out and it's just, uh, yeah. So, I'm I mean, I'm really, really interested to see. And this was very, this is a lot of, uh, you know, commitment and money and time on the part of Sony and this Amazon. This is some epicness that we're yeah. about to see. So. I hope. All right, let's roll that clip. Other dancers may be on the floor, dear, but my eyes will see only you. Only you have the magic technique. When we sway, I go weak. Wait, 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 cut. 
Well, now that is a clip. Now, yeah. obviously, you know that isn't from the Amazon pilot of the tick, but this is actually what is this from? <laughs> I know that maybe that's disappointing now, but I, this is unprecedented footage. It really is. <clears throat> uh, yeah, this was actually um, some deep history, um, a piece of footage from the third season of the Tick cartoon, actually, which is just fun. Um, it happened to turn out that at that time, and this is around 96, 97, uh, on the Saturday morning tip from Fox Kids Network, they wanted a piece of content f to run alongside their credits at the end of each uh, episode in order to kind of um, give uh, uh, the, keep the kids watching until the next totally you know, keep them all stuck to the film loop. So uh, we first did some recycling of like animation and some kids' letters and stuff, but then we really realized we needed some other stream of content. So actually, this was you know initiative uh, that like Randolph Heard and Chris McCulloch and myself you know, kind of pulled together, tried to make this thing that was, basically, the Tick and Arthur got trapped in the severely handmade or homemade puppet zone, and then they're like, you know, they find out, oh, you're a two liter carton, uh, you're a two liter bottle, and I'm a milk carton, what are we gonna do? So they have to escape from this, and they meet a sort of a sock king named Hurlihy, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, it just would go on and on and on, but like, ultimately, like, the show got canceled, before we were able to carry that through. But you'll hear, like, as you watch that piece of footage, that's uh, Doc Hammer is um, puppeting, uh, you know, the, the Arthur, and I'm doing the tick. And we're in a sort of a stairwell or something at Sunbow in New York, which was the company we were working on um, doing the cartoon. And I think uh, Chris McCulloch uh, is behind the camera with, you know, Lisa Hammer. It's a it was a it was so that's some deep cuts back then, right? Yeah, man. man that's your original Venture Brothers squad. Yep. Created the Tick, rocking some hand puppets. <laughs> um, I want to thank you for being on the show, and yeah. I cannot wait to see this brand new Tick. Fantastic. Um, thanks again, Ben Edlin, yeah. and back to you, Schnepp. Thanks. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.